Hello, Facebook. Um, welcome to Synergy Behavior Solutions Facebook Live Trainer Tips. We are going to go ahead and talk today about some crate games and shaping going into the crate. I'm Sarah McLaudry. I'm the Behavior Modification and Training Coordinator for Synergy Behavior Solutions in Portland, Oregon. And today I have with me Bueller. Bueller has a sometimes not favorable view of crates. And we have to really work on making sure that crates are a positive experience for him. He was in the sheltering system as a puppy, and I'm sure that has something to do with it because he was in a crate all the time when he was in the shelter. So there's a couple things I want to talk about before we start our crate games that can be really helpful if you have a dog who's a little worried about going in the crate or you're working on building confidence and calmness about staying in the crate. So one of the things that can be really beneficial is actually taking out the pan out of the crate. So if you notice that there's actually a bed in here, but it's not a bed on top of the pan. And the reason I do that is because sometimes, uh, for some dogs, that movement of the pan can really startle them and scare them. And sometimes just the noise that their paws make on the pan can be a really problem for some dogs. The other thing that you'll notice is during our training session, I actually have my door secured open with just a piece of string, nothing fancy. And I want to do that because I want to make sure if he goes in quickly or bumps the door as he goes in, that it doesn't accidentally shut on him before I am comfortable with, or he's comfortable with having the door shut on. So we're going to start with shaping. And shaping is the art of rewarding small bits of behavior to get to a final product. Bueller is pretty uh, swift on shaping, so you'll see this probably pretty quickly. And he has done this game with crates before. Uh, not with this particular crate. Yes. So I went ahead and rewarded it, yes, for putting just one paw in initially. Yes. And so then, because he went all the way in that second time, I went ahead and waited this time. Like I said, most dogs, if you've never done this game, it's not going to be this quick. Freak. Good. And I want to add in a release word as soon as possible so that he knows when it's time to leave. And notice that I'm not saying anything. I'm just staring at the crate yep. and waiting for him to go in and then rewarding through the crate doors. Yes. So because he's played this game before, he's figured out that offering a down in the crate is probably a good idea. Freak. For some dogs, though, yep. you may have to reward them all the way back here. They're not yet willing to sit or lay down. And so just rewarding them further back in the crate can be really helpful. If you don't have a wire crate and you have a plastic crate, usually just the side openings can be helpful. And you'll notice that I'm marking when I do mark with just a verbal marker right now. And the reason I'm doing that is because with Bueller in particular and many other dogs, when we click, it tends to get them excited and they get aroused and get into training mode. And so I want this to be a little bit of a calmer exercise, not a little bit. I do want this to be a calmer exercise because I want him to be comfortable in the crate. So notice that he's not leaving, but he hasn't offered me the down yet. So I'm just going to reinforce sporadically. And there he went ahead and offered me that down. Good job, dude. Good. And so he's pretty engaged right now. I don't know if you guys can see it, but he's wagging his little pom-pom back there. So that's not really the behavior I long-term would want, but I'm very happy to see him offering the down. Great. Good job. Nice. Oh, excellent. So when he came out for his free, he actually thought about offering the down outside of the crate. Because he's trying to figure out right now, is it about the crate or is it about the down. And he aborted the down outside the crate and chose to go into the crate and offer the down. So one of the things I want to try to avoid is he's giving me a lot of eye contact right now. And that doesn't help me because if, if I was going to be leaving him in a crate, he's not going to have that eye contact. So I don't want that to be part of the cue system for him in the long run. So I'm going to avert my gaze from him and I'm going to wait until he stops staring at me. Yes. I'm going to mark and reward 
him not paying attention to me. Which is really hard for Bueller when we're training because this is what I've worked on is pay attention to me during training scenarios. So I gave a little exhale, still not staring at him. He's gonna offer all of his other little behaviors. Yes. And I'm gonna go ahead and quietly mark and reward the disengagement. Great. Good job, little dude. Nice. So really nice, quick rep repetition back into the crate. This would be a time where I could maybe think about starting to add a cue. Notice I haven't added a cue at all. But when I know that he's going to do the behavior would be the time that I add the cue. So we'll see if the, how that goes. Great. Great. Yes, nice job. So I could tell he was about to go into the crate, so I went ahead and added that verbal cue. Nice job, little dude. And we would want to build up this behavior to being able to be calm and relaxed with the crate door open before I would even attempt to start closing the door. So many dogs have been crate trained previously, either when they were a puppy or when you were leaving the house, but right now you're not leaving the house. And so you really need to reinvest in crate training. Um, I recommend crate training, you know, putting your dog in your crate and practicing the skill. Uh, maybe when you're taking a shower or when you need to go for a, maybe take the, even taking the garbage out, something really fast and quick, practicing their crate skills for a variety of times. We are having a webinar, which is uh, about separation issues during a time of staying at home and how to practice and what to practice, uh, crate training being one of them. And we're having that webinar on April 16th at 4 p.m. Pacific time. You can sign up on our website at synergybehavior.com. We're also offering a online class next Monday um, on shaping and shaping games. So if you have never done shaping with your dog, it's a really great way to engage your dog's mind and have fun and burn some energy without having to go for long walks since we're trying not to be out in public as much. And so this can be a really helpful exercise to do. So while Bueller's in there, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go ahead and come up to the computer and check to see if there's been any questions. And I'm gonna give him his snuffle mat in the crate. We'll see if there's enough room there for him. I think there should be. So he can have a little bit of a longer duration time in his crate. We'll see if he'll go back in. He's never had a snuffle mat in a crate, so he's not quite sure about this. There we go. We'll keep him entertained in the crate while I come up to look at questions. All right. So somebody was asking where Lorena is. Lorena is our other trainer. Today is her day off of Facebook Live. She will be back on, most likely on Thursday. And I do love Lorena. We're super glad to have her on staff here at Synergy. So I'm glad she has a nice fan base out there. And does anybody have any questions regarding shaping, relaxing in the crate or going into the crate? Yes, he is a cute dog. We're very thankful he's cute. It's kind of our joke here. Uh, if he wasn't cute, he would be a lot more frustrating than he is. Even us trainers can have dogs that are a little bit of a challenge. Actually, most trainers have dogs who are a little bit of a challenge. And that is definitely Bueller's task in my life. Um, but I love him dearly. All right, so he's definitely enjoying that snuffle mat in the crate. Like I said, a good way to have duration to crate behaviors. He is not relaxed per se, but it is giving him a really nice positive association to have been in the crate. Oh, and somebody else asked about closing the doors. Like I said earlier, we would not want to close the door until our dog is able to be relaxed and calm in the crate for a longer duration of time. And then we want to really break down closing the door slowly. 
Um, I would I would release that string from there and I would work on just having my hand on the door and seeing if my dog could go in and out of the crate calmly. And then I would work on slowly working that door closed if my dog could remain calm in the crate. I don't wanna just have them go in the crate and immediately shut the door. For many dogs that can cause some stress and some panic. So we really wanna make sure to break that behavior down to a slower way and make sure that they are calm in the process. All right, looks like that's all of our questions for today. Thank you so much for joining Bueller and I. Well, we did a little crate shaping today. We hope you can join us for our upcoming classes and webinars. We have a whole bunch of them on our website at synergybehavior.com. Once again, I'm Sarah McLaudry, and we look forward to seeing you online soon. Have a great day.